do for you? My name is Zena Alexander. I'm a photographer, and I need a way to protect my images. Come in, now have a seat. So, tell me more. Well, Bobby McThevery Face stole one of my photos and sold it to a company for a million dollars. And I can't prove that it's mine. How can I prevent this from happening again? Hmm. I'm gonna need to think about this one. I got it! We'll use digital watermarking through phase dispersion! What is that? Well, it's originally from a paper called Data Embedding Using Phase Dispersion. Uh, it's written by Hansinger and Ravani, um, two guys out of Kodak. Um, what is, you've got this image you want to watermark, and then you have a secret image. Um, your name begins with an X, so we'll just make it a plain X. Um, you embed this secret image throughout your uh, image you want to protect, and we do this in a way that we can't see that there is this secret image embedded in it. Um, so then when a thief steals your image, he's also taking your secret image with him, and when you call him out on it, you simply extract your image, and he can't do a thing about it. So how exactly does this work? Okay, so you want to get into the nitty gritty of this process. Here we go. The first step, you create an image of random noise that's the same size as the secret image. Then you take the Fourier transform of your secret image and the Fourier transform of your noise image. Um, Fourier transform is just transforming the images from the spatial domain to the frequency domain. Then you multiply these two Fourier transforms together, and you take the inverse Fourier transform of the product of these two to get it back to the spatial domain. You then want to do what's called zero meaning. That's where you take the average of all the values in the image and subtract it from each individual value. We do this so that the secret image is not detectable when we embed it in the actual image. Um, next, we want to multiply everything by a factor alpha. Um, it's just a multiplication factor that enables us to extract a clean image when we go through the extraction process. Everything we've done so far can be summed up in these equations, where S is just the mid-step secret message, M is the original secret message, C is that noise image we created, and E is the image we're going to embed in our image. Um, and as we said before, alpha is just the multiplication factor. So once we've processed our secret image, it's now time to embed. In order to get the highest quality extracted image, we need to put as many copies of this secret image in our image as possible. Um, the way we're going to do this is by tiling, like so. That's incredible! Well, how do we get it out to prove that it's mine? I was hoping you'd ask that. So we first extract each of the secret messages from the image and divide them by their individual standard deviations. We then add all the tiles together just to one conglomerate tile, and we multiply that conglomerate by the average of all the standard deviations. Now this next part, this is the tricky part. We have to do what's called a cyclic correlation which in the spatial domain is a pain in the butt. Luckily, it's relatively easy to do when we're in the frequency domain. First, we take the Fourier transform of the tile, and then we take the Fourier transform of our noise image that we created earlier. We multiply their magnitudes, and then subtract their phases, um, as seen in this equation here. Then we take the inverse Fourier transform of all that, and after this cyclic correlation, we have our secret message extracted and Bobby McThevery face is out of luck and in jail. So what do I do if Bobby decides to alter my image? That's the really sweet part. Because of tiling and the addition, we can recover our secret message through almost any altercation he makes to the image. Say he blurs the image. We go through the extraction process, boom, we still have our X. Um, now we, when we compare this secret message to our ideal secret message, we get a PSNR of 25.02. Um, a PSNR stands for Peak Signal to Noise Ratio. Um, and a PSNR of approximately 30 means there's no real perceptible difference between the two images. Um, so 25.02 is great. Um, say he goes and adjusts the contrast of our image. We can still see the X. And we get a PSNR of 26.19. If he compresses our image to a JPEG, X is still there, PSNR of 24.62. If for some reason he feels he wants to crop off a part of the image, um, 
RX is still there. PSNR of 27.33. If for some reason he wants to add some noise, we still see the X, PSNR of 23.46. Now if he decides he wants to rotate the image, we cannot extract the X as you see here. Um, what's happening is when the image get ro gets rotated, our watermarks also get rotated, and our algorithm is trying to extract them on a vertical and horizontal grid, so they don't line up and we don't extract it properly. We only get a PSNR of 11.39 in that case. We just gotta hope he doesn't rotate the image, I guess. Um, just in general, if our secret messages start to become imperceptible between from blurring, compression, cropping, adjusting the contrast, adding noise, we can always expand our embedding from doing the one layer like we do in this grayscale to doing all three layers of a color image. So we've tripled the number of secret images going into our edition, and the quality of our secret extracted secret image will improve. Thank you, thank you so much. That was incredible. Oh, thank you. Another job well done.